Alright folks, just going to take a few minutes to uh, shoot a video here talking about different types of locks for folding knives. Um, I did a video yesterday and uh, I said in that video that a folding knife is a broken knife and that if you're going to hard use a knife and if you want a safe knife you want to get a uh, fixed blade knife. And uh, you know I said that a folding knife by default has the ability to fail, right? And and any mechanized anything can can fail and cause an injury or cause you to get hurt or something like that. Um, I have more folders than fixed blade knives. Uh, I carry folders more than fixed blade knives, and I am a fan of folding knives. So I'm not saying anything bad, but uh, what I am saying is is that there are a number of different types of locks, and depending upon your use and your application, what you're doing, uh, what you, what the knife is intended for. One lock may be a better uh, suited lock for the job than, than something else. So anyhow, I just threw a couple of knives out on the table here, and I want to talk about some locks. And we're going to look at uh, frame locks, liner locks, back locks, uh, compression locks. And uh, I don't even know what the heck you would call this lock on a butterfly knife. But uh, we'll just talk about a couple of different locks and pros and cons of each, some things you need to look out for. And uh, that's really about it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, so the first lock I wanted to talk about is the frame lock, um, or some people will call it the Reeves Integral Lock. And uh, from what I understand, and I could be wrong, is that it was uh, invented and developed by uh, Chris Reeves. And it's called an Integral Lock because the lock is actually integrated into the scale. And if you take a look at this, um, this lock is made from a titanium scale. It's cut and it has a stress point down here that causes the steel to naturally turn um, inward where it hits along the tang of the folding knife. And uh, people will say you can adjust these by pushing on the knife and pulling on the knife or on the lock and uh, it will do great things for you. And uh, these knives, if built correctly, tend to lock up pretty solid. What happens is, is that titanium tends to be softer than blade steel. And over time, as this lock keeps moving against that harder steel, it starts to wear. And you just talk about people saying, oh, it's got 50%, 25%, 75% lockup. And that really is a measure of how far the lock bar interface, which is this piece, has moved against the tang of the blade. Um, there's a couple of different things and we're going to take a look at them that people have done to slow that down. But what's really important here is you need to make sure that your geometry for this lock is sound. And so one of the things that you want to take a look at is the angle of the tang and the angle of your lock bar interface to make sure that they're built in a way that reduces that so a lot of times with these knives, and in my opinion, lock, uh, frame locks and liner locks are the types of locks that fail more often than other knives. Because when you start to develop, this knife doesn't have it as lock rock, and that's when your blade goes back and forth, back and forth, which is more dangerous than side to side. And uh, I do have a video called uh, Lock Rock, and what happens is, is that this lock will start to walk as, as the blade moves back and forth this lock can become disengaged and fold on you. So there's a couple of things to think of. Uh, when people like to do a spine whack and a whack, 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 a knife like that, you have a harder steel and you have a softer metal. Naturally, applying negative pressure against the axis or the pivot is going to wear this lock bar interface. And when that happens, you develop space and it's not as tight of a fit up. And when that happens, this thing can rock. And as it rocks, like I said, this lock bar interface can walk, and you have a knife fold on your hand, which is uh, which is not a good thing. I'm not the best illustrator, but what you want when you have a blade, and this is very rudimentary, right? It kind of looks like this, and you have a pivot in here. Your lock, when it touches this blade, you want contact to be on the front side of the lock here not on the back. So you want some space. And what that does is that allows you to have the ability to have your interface travel. Um, 
and last a little bit longer. So people get really worked up fast, and they say, oh, if this lock is moving, 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 then my knife is going to wear out sooner. So you want to look at a knife that has an early lock up and then has the correct geometry. This is a uh, small Sabenza that has great geometry. The lock's held up great. Now some of the things that folks may do to make sure that your lock lasts longer is if you take a look at this, titanium scale, and then they put a lock bar insert right here. And that is made of a harder steel, like the blade, and then that slows the wear of the lock across the interface. So that's just one of the things that people do. Uh, another thing that is important is on a knife like this, people put what's called a lock bar stabilizer right here. And what that does is it prohibits you from pushing the lock too far in the opposite direction. Because what can happen is, is that you can actually take this and bend it the wrong direction. And once that happens, your lock is compromised. All right, that's it. We're going to move on to another lock. All right, so what we're going to look at here, there's a couple of different names for this type of lock or the concept behind this lock. I think the Spyderco calls it a bearing lock. I think Benjamin calls it an access lock. But in any event, it is uh, it, it, they're very similar. And when you this is a um, large Mannix 2XL, and it has uh, some scales that were put I got from Tough Thumbs years ago. Anyhow, this is a, a great lock for lefty uh, type folks because it can be uh, actuated either the right or left hand by either the right or left hand. And the way that this this particular lock works, and again, I'm not an expert, I'm just a guy with an opinion, is that you have right here the pivot of the blade. Blade comes up, blade comes down. Remember, I'm not the best illustrator, we just covered that. And it kind of looks like this, your blade. And then you have a ball bearing that could be made out of ceramic or steel that's on a post with a spring behind it. So as you pull this lever back, you you retract that ball bearing. And these are actually very good, very strong locks. Uh, in my experience, which is limited with these locks compared to some other ones, that that bearing holds this this very this blade very very tight, very solid, um, and reduces the ability for rock. The problem I have seen with this particular type of lock is, is that that spring on that post that holds that ball bearing uh, tends to break or can break. And then once that happens, you know, all bets are off. You could have a compromised lock. But um, very, very popular lock with a bench made and then the Mannix line in the Spyderco knives. The next lock we're going to take a look at, and I probably should have looked at this one second, this is an Emerson CQC-15, it is a uh, liner lock, and it's very similar to a frame lock. The only difference is, is that the liner, not the scale, is part of the steel that bends it back and forth. And so this Emerson, and uh, this is the one that I have two videos on, um, had lock rock when I got it. And if you take a look at the interface, you can see that the tang is sloped down this direction. Um, in order to minim minimize travel of the lock bar interface across. But uh, with this being titanium and this being a 154CM, the titanium will wear and it can create uh, lock rock. And I, and I talked a little bit about spine whacking, but also you, when you see people baton a knife, what you're doing is you're putting pressure. A, a knife is supposed to cut, so the pressure is supposed to come up this way. When you put pressure on this side, a harder steel will wear a weaker steel and you really need to think about this as uh, in terms of friction and uh, erosion and the the best example I can think of for friction and erosion would be like the Grand Canyon where you had the glaciers come down and dig a huge trench right so that's that, that's your friction once the trench was dug water came through and created erosion so once you start to see this lock bar interface wear it will wear more rapidly um, and then when you do things like apply pressure and create friction uh, in a space that it's not supposed to, the more likely you are to have a lock fail. All right. 
the uh, the next lock I was going to talk about. Let's see if I can find them. here. They are. Is is a back lock. So here's a Spyderco Endura, which by the way is a great knife. You can get this knife for like seventy bucks, sixty five bucks. Um, very good steel, great traction plan, four point carry, completely ambidextrous. Great knife. Can't say enough nice things about it. Um, and then here is a more traditional knife, a buck 110. Um, and this has what I would consider a more traditional back lock. I'm not sure if Spyderco calls this something a little different, seeing that the, uh, the lock is in the center of the handle, not at the end of it. And then, uh, an adaptation of a back lock would be this Cold Steel Raja 3, which has the Andrew Demko triad lock. Let's talk a little bit about these. Um, and the, the main thing about these knives is that a back lock is constructed with a pivot that goes through the lock bar and then a spring that sits behind it. And so, you know, once again, I'll, I'll attempt to draw a picture, but uh, it's probably not going to be the best picture in the world. So what you do is you have a locking mechanism that basically is a hook. Let's move this over. Yeah attached to a bar. The bar comes back like this. In the center of the bar is a fulcrum. So if you take a look at this buck 110, this is your fulcrum. And notice it's made out of stainless steel versus brass uh, because of the integrity of stainless steel is stronger than brass. And then your blade has a notch in it. The blade goes up like this and comes down. So as you open and shut this blade this lock bar locks into that notch. And then typically, you'll have some sort of spring mechanism. And what that spring mechanism does is apply pressure to your lock bar. Pushes it up, which makes the fulcrum put pressure down into that notch. And that's how they work. Now, the longer the fulcrum, or the longer the lever, the easier it is to release the lock. I don't have any problem releasing a lock on the spider code, but a lot of times you'll hear people talk about this Demco lock and they'll say, oh, this thing is uh, really hard to unlock. Well, there's, there's been a couple of, and I would call them improvements made to this lock bar interface. And you can see right here is your pivot. And then here's another pin, which is called a stop pin. And if you take a look, that is non-existent on the buck 110. And that pin is non-existent. This pin is to hold the scales together. It's it's not operating as a stop pin. So anyhow, with the Demco lock, what you have is, is, is a pin. And then you have this locking mechanism. And again, I'm not an expert, which comes against that pin. And then when your blade comes down, like this, this pin is integrated into the middle of that. And what it does is it allows pressure applied to the blade to push against this space here inside the pin. And it takes the pressure off of this relationship and applies it here. And it also takes pressure off the lock and then applies it there. So it kind of, I guess, splits the difference, for lack of a better word. And then also, where your fulcrum is, there's space which allows for natural wear. And it, and it has a spring mechanism, similar to the other drawing that we took a look at. Uh, in my opinion, the Demco lock is quite revolutionary, and these cold steel knives lock up like a like a drum. And uh, he's really done a great job uh, revolutionizing back lock technology. Uh, it's one of the best locks on the market, and uh, you get a lot of people who just don't like cold steel that may say things other otherwise or to the contrary. But uh, it really is. Uh, quite an achievement and uh, it's quite impressive if you take a look at it from a physics standpoint the last lock that uh, I was planning on talking about tonight oh it's not I got one more after this one is on a Spyderco paramilitary 2 and uh, from what I understand this is called a compression lock and this compression lock is uh, specific to Spyderco so like the Demco back lock right here is a stop pin here's your pivot and this stop pin stops the blade from moving forward. And then this lock, much like a liner lock, but in reverse, applies itself to the tang of the blade. And uh, 
maybe I'll do some more videos with these knives disassembled. But any anyhow, you know, you have your blade, you have your pivot. When the blade is opened, here it stops against a pin. And then you also have a lock that holds it against the tang of the blade. Similar to a liner lock, but in reverse. And uh, I've only had four, maybe this is my fourth, I think, Spyderco Par Paramilitary 2. Uh, I haven't had any other blades with this compression lock. But it locks up very well. It's very, very solid. And uh, I think it works against... Um, most locks are built to stop the, the lock from closing, but this one seems to be built from the, the lock going back too far the wrong direction and creating lock wear. Um, I think it's quite revolutionary. I like it. It's a little difficult as a lefty to actuate, but uh, I'd like to spend some more time working with this lock and playing with this lock and, and, and seeing if there's, if there's ways to get it to fail or not. Um, as you can see, this has a lot of life in it as this, this, this lock bar interface can travel across, but uh, really quite happy with it and uh, quite impressed. All right, the last lock um, that I was going to talk about, and I would consider this probably the safest of all locks. This is a butterfly knife, and uh, you can just pop this baby out, open it up, <laughs> and then the, this lock actually engages at the end of the handle. If you're using this knife, which isn't exactly ergonomic, and you're pushing and you're cutting and you're doing whatever it is that you need to do, you could even baton. As long as you're grasping the handle of this knife, I don't see how it could fail. Um, obviously, there's points where it could wear, but it seems to be the, the uh, safest and most solid lock of all. So anyhow, that's really it. Just wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about locks, lock bar interfaces. Um, some of the steel, the titanium versus the blade steel. And that's really it. So, thanks everybody.